everybody. Um, I'm over here on this side of the screen this time. I thought I would put my head over here so everybody can see the long-term effects of astrology. When you've been doing it too long, all these planets start coming out of your head and they fill the screen all around you until all that you can see are the planets. Kidding. Um, actually, I wanted to do this video <laughs> because I have a course starting next month on the Vargas or the divisional charts of Vedic astrology. And I thought I would use this opportunity to give you a sneak peek by looking at one of my favorite charts to look at, uh, which is Jimi Hendrix's chart. And I've had a few people ask me about this birth time. I've rectified this time because I was looking at a particular event in Hendrix's life and I couldn't seem to, to make it match up. And so I adjusted the birth time a little bit to make it match. And I've actually found this to be a uh, good workable birth time. The previous birth time was 1015. So I did a little bit of uh, rectification on this birth time. So my Varga course is going to start on the 14th of January. And this course is going to be running all the way through to September. So it's a very extensive course on the Vargas. And what we're going to learn on this is the uh, a mathematical system to work with the uh, Varga charts, uh, where you can understand the interrelation between all the different Varga charts. Uh, in addition to that, we're going to learn about the Varga deities that are associated with each particular Varga chart and how they can be used in interpretation as well, right? And the Vargas are really important because, um, let's say, for instance, you and I've used this analogy before. When I, when I was in school, we, um, we used to do the lazy man's approach to things, right? So I'm letting you know, yeah, I used to do the lazy man's approach to things um, in literature class, right? If we didn't want to read a book, because let's face it, you're like 16 years old. You may not want to read War and Peace or Les Miserables, right? Uh, so... Um, or you might, you know, there are some books like that I wanted to read, but sometimes I got lazy. And so we used to have these things called, uh, called Cliff's Notes, right? And so we'd look at that Cliff's Notes in order to um, get a brief summary of what the book was about, right? Um, and sometimes we're tempted to take the Cliff's Notes approach to astrology, right? And just do something, you know, really simple, a summary of something. But really, that's very incomplete, right? Um, every horoscope is like an epic novel. If you want to understand the story of the person whose chart you're looking at, there are all these different underlying threads and subplots. And it's really the Vargas or the divisional charts that let you see that, you know. So for instance, we're seeing somebody's career. We can look at that in the Rashi chart and go, oh, this person's career is like this, but we're missing out on a lot of the subtleties. And in order to get those subtleties, you might want to look at the nakshatra placement of the career indicators that are in the chart to have a clear understanding of how that individual is growing their career. In addition to that, you might want to look at the um, Dashamsha chart so you can see the level of success that that individual might have with their career. And ultimately, the question everybody's asking in association with their career in most instances is, how affluent am I going to be through my career? And so for those things, you'd want to look at the two finance-related Varga charts, the Fora and the Chaturtamsha. So on one level, the dependent upon the angle from which we're approaching a particular question um, any Varga chart can be used for specific things. So let's say, for instance, you're having trouble in career with your associates. Well, you might want to look at the Drakana, the third divisional chart, and the Dashamsha and the Rashi chart all together just to get an understanding. But there is also a mathematical system that can be used. Uh, and through this mathematical system, in addition to the other interrelations that uh, Varga charts have with each other, for instance, the Drekana, the Navamsha, and um, the Trimshamsha chart on many levels can have an interrelation with each other because they're all multiples of three. Uh, in addition to the uh, Dwadashamsha having a connection to that too, um, 
so really it depends on the angle that you're taking to a particular question as to which Varga chart you're going to use. But there's also a really simple way of doing it in order to understand uh, one of the main focuses of each particular Varga chart. And that is to understand that uh, for each of the Varga charts, you can relate it to a particular Baba or house in Vedic astrology. So the uh, Rashi uh, chart is a divisional chart in and of itself, and it's associated with the first house, the first house amongst other things, the, the life path, how the individual is, is seeing things in their life, so to speak. Um, and say, for instance, you might want to look at the, um, the Chaturtamsha, which is going to have a fourth house agenda, right? But then you get up above the number 12, and then it gets a little more confusing. How do you relate that to a house? Well, it's, it's simple. So if you were to look at the Shodamsha chart, the 16th divisional chart, and you were to subtract 12 from that, you'd have the fourth house. If you were to take the Kavadamsha chart, which is the 40th divisional chart, and subtract 12 from that, well, you'd have 28. And then you'd have to subtract 12 again to get 16 and subtract 12 again to get the number four. And so basically, it's a fancy way of saying that on a certain level, the Chaturtamsha or the D4 and the Shodamsha or the D16 and the Kavadamsha or the D40, they all have an interrelation with each other, right? So we're gonna take a look at Hendrix's chart today. And we're gonna look at one particular planet and we're going to look at that planet in the Rashi chart because the life path is always very important. And we're also going to analyze that same planet in the Chaturtamsha chart and in the Shodamsha chart and in the Kavidamsha chart, right? Just to get a clear understanding of things. So let's first, let's first kind of explain the fourth house. The fourth house Amongst other things, and for the sakes of our uh, for the sake of our purposes today, the fourth house is related to happiness, uh, security, and stability, um, and the individual's capacity to feel self-contained. Now, what do I mean by that? Right, to know oneself on a on a certain level. I mean, none of us are perfect with that, but some of us are able to do that to a higher extent than others. In Hendrix's case, that was was certainly the case. He knew who he was. He knew, you know, his musical qualities. He knew his strengths, all of those things. Right, and so um, that's another fourth house related thing. So. What we're going to do is we're going to look at those particular Varga charts and we're going to look at some of the Varga deities that are connected to each one. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a sneak peek at how you can begin to work with some of those things. So if we look at Hendrix's chart, the uh, Lagna Lord for him, the Ascendant, is uh, Jupiter. And he has an exalted Jupiter that's joined the moon in its own house. And this is a very uh, powerful placement. Uh, both of these planets are in Pusha Nakshatra. Pusha Nakshatra gives the power to create spiritual energy. And as we know, uh, Hendrix was very deeply into mysticism. Um, both of these planets are in the uh, eighth Rashi or the eighth Baba. I also work with house cusps. That's why I give the... Uh, distinguishment there, right? Because the eighth house cusp is in Leo, but it's in the eighth Rashi or the eighth equal house, I should say. Um, and one of the qualities of the eighth house is also devotion, uh, spiritual devotion, so to speak. So we know that he was very spiritually devoted to his music um, and his approach to his music was uh, given in terms of understanding uh, the meaning of creation and trying to convey that uh, through his music um, and trying to create spiritual energy. As a matter of fact, one of the things that was known about Hendrix is he reached a certain point in his career where his management was getting upset with him because they wanted him to do something that was uh, successful or that was going to make a lot of money. And he kind of just said, well, you know, I don't really care about that. I just want to get the message out, right? And that's where the man was at with things. And a lot of that is shown through his eighth house, Jupiter, his ascendant lord in the eighth house in Pusha, Nakshatra. Let's uh, take a switch over to the uh, Chaturtamsha chart. So again, I'm just giving some simple things because I could go on for a really long time otherwise. So as we look at that and we follow that Jupiter, 
that Jupiter is staying pretty close to the moon. Why? Well, let's look at this because in the, um, oops, sorry, in the Rashi chart, which is down here, those two planets are about three or four degrees apart from each other. So, you know, they'll stray as we move them into other divisional charts, but on many of the divisional charts, they'll, they'll stay close to each other. Uh, both of those planets are in the uh, third, with the third house as an important uh, house for musical expression. Interestingly enough, and see, I get carried away and I can't help myself, but I know we're focusing on the Vargas, but um, this third house cusp, and this is a complex point for a lot of people, right? But house cusps can have nakshatras too. House cusps are specific degree points within a sign. So we take that third cusp position from the Rashi chart and dependent upon how the, var the Rashi chart is carved up to create the divisional chart, as in this instance, each uh, Rashi gets carved into four equal portions to create the Chaturthamsha. Then the third house cusp is going to be placed in a different sign, respectively, right? But regardless of which sign it goes into, the nakshatra that's associated with the house cusp is going to stay the same. Why? Well, on many levels, what you're looking at with the Rashis is 12 equal portions of the ecliptic right? So the Rashis change in the Varga charts, but the actual astronomical things that go on in the sky, like house cusps, planets, all of those things, they stay in the same nakshatra, regardless of which Varga chart they go into, right? So let's say, for instance, you've got uh, Saturn in Rohini uh, in this particular chart. And Saturn is getting relegated over to, um, to Virgo in the uh, Chaturthamsha chart while Saturn is still in Rohini because the nakshatras are constellations. They're actual astronomical points. So they're going to, planets will stay in the same nakshatra regardless of where they're placed in a divisional chart. And the same thing will happen with house cusps. But I got off on a tangent there, mainly because I want to bring to your attention the fact that the third house cusp here is in Uttara Bhadrapada Nakshatra. And Uttara Bhadrapada Nakshatra, and especially people with uh, prominent placements in there, they have this capacity to draw information down. And this tip tends to happen with both of the Bhadrapadas, right? With Purva Bhadrapada, it's more about elevating energy. Uh, with Uttara Bhadrapada, it can be more about bringing energy down. But that being said, a similar thing can happen with Purva Bhadrapada, where people have the capacity to, to channel things, right? And Hendrix definitely was very powerful in channeling his music. But I got off on a tangent there. Let's focus on Jupiter. Uh, as we see, Jupiter is in the third house, and it's in a... Uh, Sanatana, Rishi Sanatana Chaturthamsha. Uh, Sanatana Chaturthamsha's uh, give everlasting uh, fortune in relation to things. So if we understand the Chaturthamsha deities, they are uh, Rishi Shanaka, which means uh, fortune that has existed since the beginning. Uh, we also have uh, one that's not shown here, uh, which, oh, there's one, Rishi Sananda. Uh, which basically will relate to fortune that uh, gives great happiness. Uh, we've also got Rishi Sanatana, uh, which is fortune that is everlasting, and Rishi Sanat Kumara, which is fortune that always refreshes itself. So for something to be really fortunate, it has to be one of those things. It has to have existed since the beginning. It has to give us great happiness. It has to be everlasting. All of those things give great fortune, right? Ever, if, if something's everlasting that we enjoy, that's, we're very fortunate to have that. If we've had something since the beginning, well, we've been very fortunate to have that. If something keeps bringing us newer and newer levels of prosperity, well, that's obviously you know, very fortunate as well, right? And if something gives us great happiness, that's obviously fortunate. So his Jupiter is in a Sanatana. Uh, Chaturthamsha, right? So he, his level of skill 
uh, who he was, uh, somebody who was here to uh, create spiritual energy through his music. That was something that was uh, everlasting. His skills, I mean, basically this Jupiter is conjunct the third cusp and the legacy of Hendrix continues to live on long past his death. And this is actually kind of saying that right? Is that, you know, he was somebody who was here to create spiritual energy and his music was something that was going to be everlasting. And that's definitely the case in his particular instance. And if you have not heard his music, then goodness gracious. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Go look for it because I know some people haven't, but you know, go, go look for his music and listen to it online and you'll see You'll see where I'm coming from. That's one of the greatest guitar players, arguably the greatest guitar player of all time. But, you know, this Jupiter is in neutral dignity and planets in neutral dignity tend to have a level of scarcity about them. So he was never fully satisfied with his, uh, with his talents or with the level of happiness that he received from his music, even though his music long outlasted him. Let's take a look at the uh, Shadamsha chart. Now, most people know the Shadamsha chart as being related to uh, cars and things like that, right? Uh, well, it is related to that. You do look at vehicles through the Shadamsha chart, but the, um, and that's another fourth house thing, vehicles. Um, but what do vehicles do? They get you through. They carry you somewhere, right? Um, and so the Shadamsha chart is also about happiness because the factors that are in the Shadamsha chart are the things that get us through life. You know, they're the vehicles that we go through life in that tend to either provide us happiness or not provide us happiness, dependent upon the associations with it. So here we see Jupiter is again the Lord of the Ascendant, and Jupiter is in Taurus, where it's going to be in this particular instance in a great enemy sign. And Jupiter is in a Hara Shadamsha. And I want to talk a little bit about that. And, but let's also point out that Jupiter's here with Mars. And Mars is in a friend sign in this particular instance, right? And both of them are in Hara Shadamshas. So Mars was going to give him that passion uh, in a very Taurian way, which, you know, gave him the uh, stubbornness with which to uh, really work against the resistance in order to um, to become successful, which he ultimately did, because I think inside of him, he knew he had a message to share. And Hara Shadamsha's, Hara is a name of Shiva, and it means the remover, right? So basically, planets in a Hara Shadamsha are going to remove, focus on removing things that are obstacles uh, to their happiness in whatever uh, capacity they're related to in that particular Varga chart. Right. And in this particular instance, we can see Jupiter is related to the first equal house, the fourth equal house, but also the seventh house cusp. So that's, you know, seventh house is about fame, fortune through being himself and being stable in that. So he, um, even though his main purpose was to create spirituality through his music, he obviously wanted to become successful, first of all, so he could be stable and make a living while he was doing that. Uh, but in addition to that, so he could spread the message further because it served his purpose. But as we can see that Jupiter is in a great enemy sign. So he's wanting to create spiritual energy through his music and he begins to get a little disappointed and uh, upset that he has to uh, deal with uh, this thing of material security and material stability. So this is a good way of seeing that, you know, money doesn't always necessarily buy happiness, right? What brought him the happiness was creating spirituality through his music. And this would be reflected through Jupiter in a great enemy sign and in a hara, uh, hara shadamsha. But Mars itself is in a friend sign. So Mars knows that he has to kind of go out and do what he has to do. And we can see Mars rules that third house cusp. It's also the fifth equal house. So this is in terms of his creativity and his creative expression. We knew that he had to, you know, he had to do what he had to do, so to speak. Let's take a look at the Kavadamsha chart because I get the feeling I could go on for like an hour here. But I don't know if all of you would want to watch for an hour or so. 
Okay, let's talk about the Kava Damsha chart and what it's about. The Kava Damsha chart being related to the fourth house and being related to fortune is looked at in order to judge the auspicious and inauspicious things that come into our life. So for something to be truly fortunate and to provide a great level of happiness, security, and stability, it has to be uh, equally within the Shadamsha, I mean, within the uh, Kavadamsha chart showing that, right? And as we look at it, what do we have here? We have a uh, exalted Jupiter, right? Jupiter is the Lagna Lord here too. So this is a very powerful Jupiter. It's having to kind of share this particular uh, house with uh, Mercury, uh, which is not a very happy Mercury, as you can see here, because Mercury is in a great enemy sign, right? And so maybe we'll take a look at uh, Jupiter, but this is something that's really interesting because Jupiter is exalted. He's the Lord of the Ascendant. And for those of you who know what Gandharvas are, doesn't that just make perfect sense with Jimi Hendrix, right? A Gandharva, for those of you who don't know, is a celestial musician. So you've got an exalted Jupiter in Cancer that's self-contained, that is a Gandharva, uh, is in a Gandharva Kavadamsha, right? So basically, this is somebody who was aware of his musical talents, knew that he was very talented uh, and was confident in his talents. Um, because Jupiter is Mritta, it equally means a uh, soul who was likely doing this for several different incarnations, uh, working to create spiritual energy through his music, right? So where did uh, things reach a level of potentially falling apart for him in regards to that? Because we also have... Uh, this Mercury here that we're looking at, that we have to uh, contend with. And this Mercury is in Anuradha Nakshatra. Anuradha Nakshatra, amongst other things, gives the uh, power to, uh, to judge things, uh, gives right discrimination, right judgment. Uh, why? Well, we know Anuradha is on many levels associated with the power of devotion. But when we're devoted to something, we can become completely engrossed in it. Um, but to truly enjoy something, such as in the story of Radha and Krishna, we have to have a certain level of separation. Because if you're truly one with something, there's no enjoyer and the thing that's being enjoyed. Those two things are merged. So there has to be a slight level of delineation. And so Anuradha Nakshatra is also connected to the power to judge and have right discrimination uh, in relation to things. And we can see that Mercury rules the seventh and the tenth. And so in terms of being in the public limelight, uh, which the seventh cusp is in Rigashira Nakshatra, so that was something that didn't bring a lot of satisfaction his way, really, it didn't really make him feel that happy. And the 10th cusp is in Chitra Nakshatra, which kind of made him realize my particular guess would be that he, um, uh, that he recognized that the fame and fortune he thought he wanted was something that he didn't really want. And those two things can happen. Uh, that can happen with Chitra Nakshatra. It'll make us chase after things because it makes us think that that is what is ours. And if there's a good solid Mars to support it, then we're really truly connected to those things on a, uh, on a good level and on a uh, positive level. And they really are where our heart is. But if Mars isn't giving the best support to that, then it ends up that we're kind of chasing rainbows in that particular regard. So he may have felt that he was chasing rainbows in regards to uh, fame and fortune, as we're able to see. Uh, why am I talking about the 7th and 10th house cusps when I'm looking at the 7th and 10th equal house? Because you can judge an equal house in terms of how it's growing by looking at the particular house cusp that it's associated with. And you can get a lot of clarity on that particular Baba chart. But the main focus here is we see somebody who was a celestial musician 
uh, Gandharva uh, because of that exalted Jupiter. And that's just very powerful to see in this chart. So that's all we're going to take a look at today. If you're interested in signing up for the course or if you just want a little more information on the Varga charts, but we're going to go into depth in a lot of these factors uh, such as the uh, mathematical indications of the Varga charts and the Varga deities uh, over the course of this particular course. Um, I will also um, teach a little bit about the Lajitati of Astas, which is a really wonderful way of judging planets because those are important factors to look at in regards to the uh, divisional charts. And so there's like a little bit of a course within a course within um, the Varga course. So if you want to look at more information on the course, there should be a link below. That's going to do it. Please take the very best care of yourself. Bye now.